Welcome back to the Ghost Geeks. I'm Chad, and today we bring you part two in our three-part series on REM pods. Let's hit that deep dive. In the last video, we talked about how REM pods actually create their own electromagnetic fields. The mechanism for this action is really simple. You see, there is an antenna which is connected to the circuit board. This connection supplies the antenna with power and a connection to one of the two logic chips on the board. This means the antenna is doing two things. One, it is conducting a voltage up and down the antenna which excites the electrons in the antenna, which begin to oscillate. And just like that, you have an electromagnetic field generator. The second thing this antenna is doing is sending back a signal to the logic chip on the circuit board. The signal is what actually triggers the REM pod to light up and make noise. So what's going on? How does a simple antenna pick up a signal? Well, it's not a signal like you would imagine a radio station signal being. Since the REM pod is creating its own electrical magnetic field, the antenna is actually sending back a voltage change. Now you often hear people say these work when the electromagnetic field is broken, but that isn't correct. What actually happens is one of two things. First, the electromagnetic field is acted upon by another electromagnetic field. If you remember from our EMF and K2 series, when this happens, the waves can add together or subtract each other out. When this happens, the REM pod's field will accept the interference and the waves will propagate in kind. This change in the electromagnetic field will cause a voltage differential to return signal. Pretty simple. The second thing that can happen is when the electromagnetic field encounters something that creates an impedance to the wave, like when you put your hand near the antenna. While the end results are the same, the causes are very different. While we do have a small electromagnetic field within us, it is not enough to activate the REM pod. Instead, our body, as a medium for the wave to travel through, changes the rate in which it can move. This slowing down of the electromagnetic wave will react with the original wave and create something akin to a feedback loop, except in reverse. The waves are reducing rather than multiplying. When the REM pod's logic chip gets this voltage differential, the chipset reads that difference and sends a signal to the output that then triggers the LEDs to light up and the buzzer to make noise. The intensity of the differential determines how many lights are activated and the pitch and volume of the buzzer. To shield or not to shield? That is the question. There are three levels to shielding our REM pods. The first is to create shielding around the circuit board so that interference cannot penetrate the metal line circuit paths and create false results. The second level would be to shield the antenna, but this poses the problem of acquiring the return signal if the antenna can't read or in the case of shielding, can't create the electromagnetic field. And the last level would be to shield the whole REM pod by using a Faraday cage or bag, which can introduce its own set of issues too. When I build my REM pods, I always put my circuit boards in a static bag to prevent any buildup of static charges on my boards, especially when they are in a stuffed animal or other container that can easily pick up free electrons. I do not shield my antenna outside of the design specs of the antenna. The propagation of the electromagnetic field and the return signal to the board are vital to the successful operation of the REM pod. Placing the REM pod in a Faraday cage gives a false sense of isolation and immunity to interference. The reason this isn't always true is actually simple. When you put the REM pod in a Faraday cage, you've put its electromagnetic field in there too. Since a Faraday gauge consists of conductive metals, the REM pod's electromagnetic field can be interfered with by the electrostatic properties of the cage itself. While we use Faraday cages in electronics and in our cabling to resist interference, the resistive strength works when the source is external to the cage. While the electromagnetic field created by the REM pod isn't what we are trying to shield the REM pod from, like I mentioned previously, the REM pod will create a voltage differential even when something impedes the stability of the REM pod's electromagnetic field. In this case, the Faraday cage can grab the REM pod's electromagnetic field and disperse it from inside, which acts like a resistor and returns a voltage drop to the REM pod's circuitry. So is it wrong to use a Faraday cage? Absolutely not. This can be a viable way to get results if you're in a location with too many outside EMF issues. For example, say the location you're investigating is next to a radio tower or a truck stop or an electrical substation. Any EMF detection type device is useless in these environments without a Faraday cage. You just need to understand the way these things work to plan additional experiments around their weaknesses in order to remove false positives from your data set. 
One strategy to mitigate false positives is to always use a K2 meter alongside or in proximity to your REM pod. Why do this, you ask? Well, the K2 meter measures the change in the electromagnetic field. So when we place the K2 meter outside of the bubble created by the REM pod, we can monitor it for interfering waves. Let me show you what I mean. As you can see, the K2 gives a huge spike at the same time as the REM pod. However, the distance between them lets me know that this is outside interference in the environment and not a spirit. As investigators, we should always find ways to add mechanisms into our investigations to alert us to false positives. And we should take the time to debunk after interactions we believe could be paranormal. These actions only strengthen our evidence and keep us from falling into the trap of creating false narratives versus finding the truth. I hope you're enjoying this series on REM pods. If you made it this far, I hope that means we've earned your subscribe. Please hit that like button and let us know in the comments what other gear you'd like to see in our tech series. Until next time, I'm Chad with the Ghost Geeks, and remember, talk nerdy to me.